Hello. In this video, I want to show you some mounts that you can farm with a reasonable effort. I made a video like this a few months ago and a lot of you really enjoyed it, so I decided to make a second part. These mounts take a little bit more effort to get by comparison, but generally they are well worth it, especially for avid mount collectors. I took care not to include anything that's too difficult to get or just takes too long. Let's start off easy with the tribe mounts. These are all acquired by reaching a certain reputation with the various tribes in each of the expansions, which means that there are quite a lot of them. To get reputation, you'll have to complete daily quests. You get 12 allowances to complete daily quests per day, which can be tracked from the timers page. Once you reach the required reputation, there's an additional cost attached to it that usually isn't too steep. The tribe quests are also useful for leveling alt jobs, as they provide good EXP and access to unique materials. I would recommend skipping the Aram Reborn Beast tribes for now, if you are just after the mounts, because they can often be purchased using the Mughal tombstones during the tombstone events that happen every now and then. There's a link with a more detailed look at the different tribes and their quests in the video description. Next up are the Kamuis, which can be farmed by completing Stormblood Extreme Trials unsynced. If you didn't know, most duties in the game can be entered synced, meaning your level gets adjusted, or unsynced, meaning you go in without being scaled down. This allows you to clear outdated content easily, and this is why getting these mounts is a lot easier now than it was in the last expansion. It's a bit more tricky than getting the Aram Reborn and Heavensward mounts, like I showed in the last video, because the bosses do take a fair bit of damage. My advice here is to find a few players to do it with, or to open up Hearty Finder group. I found that there's pretty much always someone up for farming some mounts, and players are usually kind enough to stick around until everyone has the mount after getting it themselves. To open a party finder group for the trials, just select duty, trials, pick the right trial from the list, and select objective loot, and let people know that you're mount farming in the comments. You can also take remove roll restrictions for all remaining openings, but perhaps bring a tank and a healer just to be sure. I've had most luck with groups between 3 and 6 players, which offers a nice balance between kill speed and how many runs you need to do to get everyone to mount. Some of the trials also drop materials that can be used in crafting, which go for up to 200,000 gil on the market board. Once you get all of the Stormblood mounts, a regular quest called A Lone Wolf No More will unlock close to the Kugane Etherite, which will let you unlock the special mount Kamui of Nine Tails, which actually just has seven tails for some reason. Next up are various Heavensward and Stormblood Savage Raid mounts. These are pretty easy to get now, and they have a guaranteed drop at the end of each duty. The mounts are the following. Air Force from Sigma Scape V4 Savage, Model O from Alpha Scape V4 Savage, Arhideus from Alexander the Soul of the Creator Savage, and the Gobwalker from Alexander the Burden of the Father Savage. Similar to the Stormblood mounts, you can find yourself a group of players to do these with using the Party Finder, and it shouldn't take very long to get them at all once you figure out the raid mechanics. Some of those mechanics are definitely weird if you haven't played the Savage fights, but there are a lot of unsync guides out there which I always recommend watching before going into one of these with random players. Next up is a list of mounts that are purchasable using Skybuilder scripts, which can be obtained by participating in the Ishgardian restoration, or you can just get the mounts by buying them with Gil. The mounts are the Ufiti, Big Shell, Megalotragus, the Albino Caracal, and the Antelope Doe. There's a good chance that the mount price will be messed up for a while after I release the video. I remember that the flying chair market on the entire Chaos Data Center crashed for a solid week the last time I made a video. Sorry. Another two mounts that are purchasable are Construct 14 and Gabriel Alpha. These can also be obtained in Bosja. Both of them go for between 200,000 and 600,000 gil on my data center. Next up, the Gold Saucer is home to another bunch of mounts. Those being the Adamantois, Fenrir, Archon Throne, Corpoco Colossus, Typhon, and this giant cactus here. Overall, these mounts are relatively time intensive to get, but we have moved on from freebies to some intermediate mounts here. Next up are two mounts that can be obtained through crafting. First up is the Magic Bed. This can be crafted by level 80 and above carpenters, but it contains rare materials, one of which is Enchanted Elm Lumber. The other crafting mount that's pretty easy to get is L2. This dragon is the only mount you can get for doing custom deliveries. You can find L2 in Foundation in Ishgard once you've unlocked it. 
return weekly to complete his custom delivery missions, and you'll get a mount once you reach the maximum satisfaction, which is similar to the tribe reputation. This only takes a few weekly turn-ins, and only a couple of minutes each time, but many people miss it because there are no other custom delivery NPCs that award mounts at this point. Forgiven Reticence is the mount from the Shadowbringers trailer, and you can get it by completing hunts, specifically the ones that award Sacks of Nuts, which are the Shadowbringers and Endwalker ones. You can get 200 Sacks of Nuts for completing the weekly Elite Hunts from the Hunt Boards and additional ones for participating in S-Rank Hunts or Hunt Trains. If this sounds like gibberish to you, don't worry, I'll leave a link explaining Hunts in the video description. Essentially, you'll want to join a Hunt Discord server. There are many options out there, but I recommend Faloop, which will be linked below. Stormblood, Shadowbringers and Endwalker each have a unique Fate mount. The mounts are Ixion from the Fate A Horse Outside, Iron Frog Mover from A Finale Most Formidable, and Level Checker from the Endwalker Fate Omicron Recall Killing Order. You'll need to participate in a special fate that only spawns every now and then, and depending on how you do, you'll be rewarded with a currency that can be exchanged for the mount. It takes most players between 2 and 4 fates to get this, and the only limiting factor is the availability of the fate. Again, the Hunt Discord servers can help here because they often have roles set up that will be pinged when the fate spawns. When you get a ping, just travel to the region that the fate is happening in, and find yourself a group in Shout Chat, which will increase your overall contribution and through that the amount of rewards that you get. You can get up to 6 of the unique currency for each fate, and you need 12 of them to get the mount, so in an ideal scenario you only need to do the fate twice. Once you have the currency, take it to the right vendor, those being Ashina and Raga's Reach for Ixion, Fathard and Yormo for Iron Frog Mover, and Nesvas in Ratsat Han for the level checker. The last mount on this list is the shark mount High Bodus for scoring 10,000 points in ocean fishing, which is fairly easy to do. Ocean fishing is also a great way of leveling your fishes, so maybe look into that if your fisher isn't maxed out yet, and chances are you'll just get the mount while leveling your fisher anyways. I made a video on ocean fishing not too long ago if you need some help. This can take a few runs to do, but even inexperienced fishers just have to get a little bit lucky to get this one. All the mounts listed in this video will be in a Google spreadsheet, which you can find in the video description. You can click on File, make a copy to get an editable version so you can keep track of the ones that you've collected. This way you can slowly go through the list and get the mounts one after another. That's it for this video. I hope there was some useful information in here for you. If you haven't seen the first part yet, I highly recommend you watch it and get those mounts first because they are much easier than the ones listed here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.